Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about the muscles of the soft palate. Now, before we begin to do so, let's look at the different compartments of the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. So, when we view it laterally, we can see that superior to the oral cavity lies the nasal cavity, and posterior to these are the nasopharynx and the oropharynx. Let's see it in a representational diagram. Here we have the oral cavity, superior to which is the nasal cavity, and posterior to this is the nasopharynx, and posterior to the oral cavity is the oropharynx. Now what separates the oral cavity and the nasal cavity is a reef which is formed by the palate. So the anterior portion of this is formed by the hard palate, and posterior to the hard palate continues the soft, movable muscular fold, which is the soft palate. Now the soft palate is suspended from the posterior border of the hard palate which forms the roof of the oral cavity and it continues posteriorly from the hard palate to act as a valve. Okay, So it acts as a valve that can either be depressed or elevated. When it is elevated, we can easily visualize that it would separate the nasopharynx from the oropharynx. Right? So as this elevates, separates the nasopharynx from the oropharynx, while when it is depressed, it helps close the oropharyngeal isthmus. Right? So, so far we have read that the roof of the oral cavity is formed by the palate, anterior part of which is the heart palate, and posteriorly continues a movable fold of a movable muscular fold, which is the soft palate. Now, Coming to the surfaces and the borders of the soft palate. Now it's got two surfaces and two borders. Okay, the surfaces are our anterior surface and the posterior surface. And the two borders are the superior border and the inferior border. Now let's look at this in a bit more detail. Now our anterior surface, it's this surface, it is concave and is marked by a median raphe, while the posterior surface is convex and it is continuous posteriorly with the floor of the nasal cavity. Now our superior border is attached to the posterior border of the hard palate and the inferior border is free and bounds the pharyngeal isthmus. From its middle hangs a conical projection called the uvula. Okay, so let me show you the uvula in this diagram. So we've seen that the soft palate has an anterior surface and a posterior surface, the anterior surface being concave while the posterior surface being convex. And at the same time, it has a superior border continuous with the posterior border of the hard palate and an inferior border which is free, bounds the pharyngeal isthmus, and from the middle of which hangs conical projection called the uvula. Now apart from the borders and the surfaces of the soft palate, there is also the present of two folds of the mucous membrane. Okay, these are the anterior fold and the posterior fold. Now these are basically formed as coverings of mucous membrane on the muscles of the soft palate. Okay, so as we progress into the lecture, we would get into all the muscles of the soft palate. But before that, let me tell you that there are two muscles which descend from the soft palate towards the tongue, the lateral uh, surface of the tongue, and towards the lateral wall of the pharynx, respectively. As these descend downwards, they are enclosed by folds of mucous membrane forming the palatoglossal arch and the palatopharyngeal arch. Okay, so let's read about them. The anterior fold, as you can see in this diagram, pointed by this arrow, the anterior fold is called the palatoglossal arch or the anterior pillar of horses. It contains the palatoglossal muscle as it descends downward towards the lateral surface of the tongue and reaches the side of the tongue at the junction of its oral and pharyngeal parts. This fold forms the lateral boundary of the oropharyngeal isthmus 
for the estimates of forces. Now, posterior and medial to that, we can see another pole pointed by this arrow, and that is the palatopharyngeal arch or the posterior pillar of forces. This contains the palatopharyngeus muscle. It forms the posterior boundary of the tonsillar fossa, which is present between the anterior and the posterior fold, and merges inferiorly with the lateral wall of the pharynx. Don't worry if you haven't understood this yet. You'll probably understand this a lot better when we come into the muscles and their origin and insertion when we talk about them. Now, starting with the muscles of the soft palate. See, the muscles of the soft palate are mainly five, which are the tensor palatae, levator palatae, musculus uvulae, palatoglossus, and the palatopharyngeus. But one thing you have to note here is there are two muscles that arise from the base of the skull and descend downwards towards the palate, and these are the tensor palatae and the levator palatae, as you can see here. This is the tensor palatae, and this is the levator palatae. So they arise from the base of the skull, descend towards the palate. Whereas the other two folds, which are the palatoglossus and the palatopharyngeus, begin from the palate and descend downwards into the lateral surface of the tongue and the pharynx respectively. So you can see the palatoglossus and the palatopharyngeus. Apart from that, there is also the musculus uvulae, which controls the uvula, right? So let's begin by talking about the tensor palatine or the tensor valli palatine. Now starting with tensor valli palatine, see the tensor valli palatine is actually one of the most important muscles of the soft palate because it forms the palatine aponeurosis, okay? So this muscle basically has two parts in its course. One is the vertical and the other is the horizontal part. So the vertical part, as you can see here, it's triangular, thin and muscular, whereas the horizontal part is fibrous and forms a, a flat aponeurosis. Okay, so the fibrous part forms the palatine aponeurosis. Okay. So now starting with the, so see the basic idea is that it's got a vertical part and as it descends downwards, it forms a single tendon which winds around the pterygoid hamulus and flattens out to form the palatine ap aponeurosis as it joins with the other side. Okay, so vertical down, winds around the pterygoid hamulus and flattens out to form the palatine aponeurosis. So let's talk bit more in detail about its origin and insertion. So now if we look at the vertical part, we see that it has a base and its apex is oriented inferiorly, right? So at the base, it is attached to the skull. And here it is attached medially to the scaphoid fossa near the root of the pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. And it continues laterally along the membranous part of the auditory tube to the spine of the sphenoid. So in this way, in its origin, it is related to three structures. One, medially the scaphoid fossa, then laterally along the auditory tube, and then the greater ring of the sphenoid. Now I've shown you an anterior view of the face so that you can visualize the course of the auditory tube from the middle ear to the nasal cavity. And along the lateral border of this is our tensor valli palatine. So now that we have understood the story so far, uh, we have studied uh, its base. Now let's see what happens next. Okay, so from the base, the muscle descends vertically, converging to form a delicate tendon which winds around the pterygoid hamulus, passes through the origin of the vaccinator and expands and fans to form the fibrous horizontal part of the muscle, continues across the midline to form the palatine aponeurosis. So the idea is that from its origin, these fibers descend down, 
they converge to form a delicate tendon okay so as they have descended down form the delicate tendon this winds around the pterygoid hamulus of the medial pterygoid plate right so it winds around 90 degree medially around the pterygoid hamulus passes through the origin of the buccinator and after it winds it fans out to form the fibrous horizontal part so so far we had the vertical muscular part here it fans out to form the fibrous horizontal part which is continuous across midline of the fibrous of the other side to form the palatine aponeurosis so if we were to see from the base of the skull you see it descending vertically and then winds around the pterygoid hamulus 90 degree medially to fan out and form the fibrous horizontal part and this with the other side forms the palatine aponeurosis now the palatine aponeurosis anteriorly it is attached to the posterior border of the heart palate but posteriorly it is unattached and ends in free margins okay so this palatine aponeurosis is actually a very important structural component of the soft palate and is the site of attachment for the rest of the muscles of the soft palate. So here in this diagram you can also see that the levator valla palatini, it is also inserted into the palatine aponeurosis, right? So coming to the actions of the tensor valla palatini, one it tenses the soft palate okay so chiefly the anterior part and this uh, enhances the functions of the other muscles of the soft palate okay it makes them more effective apart from that as in its origin it is uh, related to the membranous part of the auditory tube its uh, contraction opens the auditory tube like uh, during swallowing or during yawning to equalize the air pressure between the middle ear and the nasopharynx. Okay, now another point I want to insert here is that this is the only muscle of the soft palate which is not innervated by the vagus nerve. Okay, this is innervated by the mandibular nerve. So, if you remember when we were talking about the mandibular nerve, we discussed that. From the main trunk, there is a branch to the medial pterygoid muscle, right? And that branch also innervated the tensor valli palatini muscle. So, this is supplied by the mandibular nerve of the trigeminal nerve. However, all the other muscles of the soft palate are actually supplied by the vagus nerve through the pharyngeal branch and the pharyngeal plexus. So, uh, the next muscle is the levator valli palatini and I'll continue talking about this in the next video. So I hope to see you there soon. Thank you so much for watching.